Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and pull in the data from our API using uh, Fetch uh, instead of a React app. So all we'll do here is we'll just replace, if I pull up the website here, um, right here, we'll replace all of this sort of uh, placeholder text with our actual data from the API. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna put all this inside of use effect inside of our app uh, function here. So at the very top here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a use effect. And we can go ahead and just create a function like this. We'll add empty dependency array here at the end. And inside of here, we'll have a get data function that will be asynchronous that we will call uh, to get our data. So first things first, let's import use effect up here at the top. And then we'll create this get data function. I'll put this below the rest down here, I guess. So we'll do a const get data. Data equals an arrow function, just like this. And then we'll make this async. And then we go ahead and grab all of our data. So this will be fairly simple. Um, but we need to set a few things up. So we're just going to use the fetch API. And if you're not familiar with fetch, I can pull it up here. API. I'll put this link in the description as well. But this is just a built-in way to make uh, for fetch resources. In this case, um, our API data. And down here should be an example. Um, right here. So we're going to use a wait fetch instead of dot then, but uh, you can see kind of how it works right here. A wait fetch, the URL, and we can pass in different um, uh, headers or anything else we need down here, but we will do a really basic one in this video. Uh, so if you want to read more about this, I'll put this in the description, but we'll just use a really basic fetch request here to get our data. Um, before we do that, though, we need to set something up. Uh, we need to set up a proxy. So we go inside of our package.json. We can add something here at the top. Uh, we'll put it right below this private line right here. We can add proxy and set this to uh, HTTP colon local host 8000. And if we don't do this, we'll get a cores error because our uh, server running at 3000 will throw it an error when we try accessing our API at uh, port 8000. But instead, we can proxy the request to be uh, port 8000, and then we won't have those cores errors anymore. So make sure you add this line to your packs.json before you go any further. Okay, now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and get our data. So first thing we do, we'll get our education data first. So we'll create a variable and call this education response. And this will equal await fetch, which is built in, and then we can pass in just slash education. And since we already proxy it to 8,000, we don't need to put the localhost 8,000. We can just put slash education, and then we can get that data um, at the education route. And we already created this in our backend. This will just get all of our education rows and return them for us. Now that we have the education response, we can create another variable I'll call this education data, and we can get the data by doing a wait again, doing the education response dot JSON, and that will return our data for us. And now in this variable, we'll have all of our data. Now we need to store this data somewhere, and where I'm going to put this is inside a state variable. I'm using use state. So up here at the top, I'm going to import use state, and then um above this use effect here i'm going to create a couple state variables const square brackets name of our variable in this case will be education and then a function to update it in this case will be set education equals use state and a default value inside the parentheses in this case it's uh, just an empty array we'll do the same thing again this time we want our work set work equals use state empty array const portfolio for our portfolio data set portfolio equals use state empty array okay now we have our state uh, variable set up 
Now we can go ahead and set this education data to that state variable. So we can do set education, which is what we defined here as our function to set the data. Set education, and we'll pass in our education data. Education data. And now we can do the same thing for our work and our uh, portfolio. So to save some time here, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this down. So we'll copy this here, and we'll copy it there. Uh, we'll change education. And all of these to be work. Um, and then we'll need to capitalize the W and set work. And that should be good there. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, grab the education down here. Change this to portfolio. And then once again, we will capitalize the P and set portfolio. Um, oh, and one more down here. Portfolio data. Now let's go ahead and just console log all these and see what happens. So console log education, uh, well, education data, work data, and portfolio data. We'll save that. Now we come back to our uh, back to our app here. Uh, back here, let's open the terminal uh, or the console up here. Um, so we're getting an error. Okay, it looks like I just need to restart my server. We should be good now. Um, we may need to restart our server after making those changes. Um, probably the package.json will probably need to restart our server when we make changes there. Um, but here we go. Now we have our education right here. We have our work experience. And then we have our portfolio data right here. So everything we need is all inside of these values now. So we correctly successfully got all of our data from the API. Now we should be good. I can delete these. I can get rid of these console.logs now. But now we should be good to um, actually use this data inside of our JSX here. So what we want to do is we want to find our education section, which is right here. Inside of here, we have these grid columns that fits between this div and this div. Right now, we hard coded in three separate ones. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is delete the two bottom ones and just keep one. And then we'll loop over that data and create one of these for every uh, data object that we have, every um, element in that array. So inside of here, what I'll do is I'll check if education exists, which it should already because we said default value, but just in case, we'll do education and education.map. I'll call it ed, I guess. Um, uh, we'll call it E, I guess, and then we'll do um, just parentheses here, and we can pass our data inside of here. Oh, actually, this should be, this is in the wrong spot. This should be uh, outside of this div right here, so right up here. Okay, now we'll grab this, and we'll put that right inside of here. Let's go ahead and just tab this in once right there okay now we can use this e variable to then set all the different fields inside of here so we can do e dot school to get the school and then we can get e dot degree and then down here we can get e dot years to get those years and put them right there I'll set this line, hit control L, select this whole line, delete it, and I'll create a new P tag here. Um, and I can do an E dot description to get the description. And we'll close off that P tag right there. And there we go. So now our data is coming in. I don't have money much data here, it's just kind of just test data, but you can go ahead and fill the, a good description, and these should look a lot better. Um, and if you wanted to, uh, I guess since we only have two sessions here, uh, if you want to change your columns here to two, you could do that as well. Um, and they'll go to the full width of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that for now. Um, but you can do what you want there. Okay, so now our education should be good. Um, let's go ahead and go on to the work section now. And we can do the same thing. We have this grid columns right here. Goes down to there. I'm going to take these bottom two divs and delete them as we don't need them now. We'll use a loop instead. Now inside of here, I can go ahead and do work 
and and work dot map w and we will create another arrow function here make sure you're putting parentheses and not curly braces otherwise you won't see your data uh, we'll paste this inside of here let's go ahead and fix all of these indents like that and then we should be able to do w dot company and i believe i forgot to create a job title field if we go back to our stuff here um, i deleted that i guess so you won't see that um, let's go ahead and add a job title real quick so we'll go into our back end um, portfolio find our models.py go to our work here and yeah i forgot to add a, a job title field so we do job title equals models dot char field max length equaling 255. Uh, open up our terminal down here. Find our back end. I'll stop the server for a moment and I'll run a Python 3 manage.py make migrations. And it will ask us to set a default since we, it's not null or blank. Um, a non-nullable field. So what we will do, we'll hit one. And since this is just a char field, I'm going to set the default value just to be an empty string. So I'll put two single quotes and press enter, and then it will create our migrations there. And then I can go ahead and run Python 3 manage.py migrate to go migrate those changes over. Um, and now if I go into the back end, Uh, make sure we run our server again though so we'll run run server and then we can go and log in and we'll go uh, i never add this to our admin panel it looks like um i guess we can we can just use the uh we can just use the api right here um, and we're already logged in, so we should be good to go. Let's go to our work. And I'll go ahead and get um, this one right here. So we'll do a get at work slash one. And here we go. So now I can set the job title here to software engineer. And we can put that. And there we go. Now it's updated. Okay. So now we should be good. Uh, let's come back here. Let's go back to our app here and now we should be able to set this to be what we just called it which is job underscore title and then once again over here we'll have our years we can replace this with w dot years inside of curly braces control l to select this line delete it and then we will make a new one up here and we can do w dot description and then close off the p tag right there okay now we'll come back here and now we have our work experience showing up right here. Now let's go ahead and finish this off by updating our portfolio as well. So uh, we'll go back to the code here. We'll come down here to the portfolio section. Once again, we have our uh, grid div right there. And we have three inside of here. Um, we'll delete this one and this one. Keep one. And then once again, we will go ahead and do portfolio and 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 portfolio folio dot map p and then parentheses and then we can go ahead and grab this and paste it right there um and there we go and now we can come here and we can do um p dot title for the title of this project the view code will stay the same except you want to go ahead and change this h5 to an a tag and then change this closing h5 to an a tag and then on here we can add an href equaling uh, p dot url i believe we called it uh, we can double check real quick um, yes url and then we can go ahead and set the description as well so control l delete that make a new one right here p tag and do p dot description and close that off okay and there we go so now we have our portfolio data coming in portfolio project one and portfolio project two 
Okay, that works great. Now you'll notice one thing over here, we're having this error. Each child in a list should have a unique key prop. Uh, whenever we use the map in JSX here, it wants to set a unique key on each item. So what we can do here is for each of these on the parent div around them, we can add a key prop on it, key equals, and just do something that's unique for each one, like the ID, so e.id. And then we can do the same thing down here on the work. On the div here, we can do a key equaling w.id. And then finally on the portfolio down here, we can do a key again, p.id. And that should be good. Uh, come back here, refresh the page, and the error is gone. So now we should be good. Everything looks the same. Um, so there we go. Everything's looking good now. We can go ahead and go back to our wide version. Get rid of that. And you can see our data here now it looks like this. And of course, we get changes, add more data, make it look better. But we're pulling in all of our data now. And that is all I want to do in this video. So now we have our correct data in. Um, there's still other things we could do to make this better and make it look a little nicer maybe. So I'll probably come back and ask some more stuff in another video. But now we have our real data in here. You can go ahead and set the column width wherever you want to make it look best for however many entries you're putting in. Um, you know, set better descriptions and stuff to make this look like a real portfolio. Um, but that hopefully will get you going on, on creating uh, the portfolio and pulling in real data from the API. Um, so that's really it. If you have any more suggestions you want to see in this series, let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably just clean it up and then and then deploy it, and we'll probably be done with this series, um, unless there's more you want to see. Uh, so if there is, just let me know in the comments, and I'll try to add what I can. Um, but that should be it. All of the links for documentation that might be helpful will be in the description, as well as links to the before and after code. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.